Welcome. We are looking at the CSEC Math Exam January 2012 video solutions. So let's start with question 1A. The first part of question 1A is asking us to use a calculator otherwise to calculate the exact value of this expression and we have to express our answer as a fraction. Now what we want to do, we want to eliminate these mixed fractions first so we can form improper fractions and then simplify to the final fraction. So let's go through the steps. Now firstly, this 1 and 3 quarters can be expressed as 1 plus 3 quarters. Now 1 here is just the same as 1 divided by 1. That's our square from here. Divided by, and this 3 and a half really is the same as 3 plus a half. And the 3 can be expressed as 3 divided by 1. And then what we want to do is add these two fractions now. So to add the fraction, we're going to make the denominators the same. So because the denominator of this expression here, this 3 quarters, is 4, we want this denominator also to be 4. So we want to multiply this one by 4 and then multiply the numerator by 4. So this will become 4 over 4. And in this case, we want this denominator to be 2 as this is. So what we're going to do, we're going to multiply this one by 2 and then multiply the numerator by 2. And then this will become 6 divided by 2, which is still 3. Alright, so let's show that. So that's what we have. Now that the denominators here are the same, we can go ahead and just add the numerators and put back the common denominator on this side with the square outside. And then in this case, we can add the numerator, the 6 and 1, and put back our common denominator, which is 2. Alright, so let's look at that. So that's what we have. And then this term now, this term now is squared. So the square here means we have to square the 7 and also square the 4. So this is going to become 49 divided by 16. And we are still dividing by 7 over 2. Right? And remember to divide by a fraction is the same as to multiply by the inverse of that fraction. So let's look what happens to each of these terms one at a time. So this term becomes 49 divided by 16 because 7 squared is 49 and 4 squared is 16. And then to divide by 7 over 2 is to multiply by the reciprocal of 7 over 2, which is 2 over 7. So let's show that. And that's what we have. And then now we have a case where we can divide 7 out of this 49 together with this 7. And then we can divide 2 out of this 2 together with 2 out of this 16. So let's show that. So we divide the 7 by 7, that's 1. And also divide this 49 by 7, that's 7. And then divide this 2 by 2, that's 1. And divide the 16 by 2, that's 8. That's simplifying the fraction. And then the result is going to be 7 multiplied by 1, which is 7 on the numerator and 8 multiplied by 1, that's 8 on the denominator. And so, our result is 7 divided by 8, and that's the answer for part 1. Let's move down now to part 2 of question 1a. Now, part 2 of question 1a gives us this expression to find the exact value and express in standard form. Now, we can use our calculator to work out this, this expression here. And when we use a calculator to work out that expression, we end up with 0 0.446. Now what we need to do is express this in standard form. And what is the rule for standard form? The rule for standard form is that if this number is expressed in standard form, it will appear as this, where the A is a number greater than or equal to one, but less than 10 and p is an integer so basically what it means is that we need to get this decimal point here and to get this decimal point here we need to multiply by 10 to the 1 but to correct that multiplication of 10 to the 1 we also multiply by 10 to the negative 1 so let's show that adjustment and this is it. We are multiplying this expression by 10 to the 1. So we can move the decimal place one place to the right. Right? One place to the right. And but to cancel this multiplication, we also have to multiply by 10 to the negative 1. Right? So when we execute this calculation in here, 
we end up with this calculation becoming this and then this 10 to the minus 1 comes back here and there we have placed this 0 0.446 in standard form 4.46 times 10 to the minus 1. So that's the answer for part 2 of question 1a. Now let's move down to question 1b. Now question 1b tells us of a typist whose basic weekly wage is $22.50 per hour in a 40 hours work week and overtime is one and a half times the basic rate. Part 1 of question 1b is asking us to calculate the basic weekly wage. And the basic weekly wage will simply be the $22.50 per hour multiplied by the 40 hours in the week. All right? So that's the calculation for the basic weekly wage and the result of that is $900. So the basic weekly wage is $900. Part 2 of question 1b is asking us what is the amount for one hour of overtime work. Right? What is the wage for one hour of overtime work? Right? And that is the basic hourly rate, which is $22.50 multiplied by the one and a half times. All right? So this is the calculation for the one hour of overtime work. All right? This is the calculation. $22.50 multiplied by the time and a half rate, which is one and a half. And that calculation gives us $33.75. So that is the overtime wage for one hour of work. All right. For part three, we are told that the typist worked 52 hours in a week. That was the total time worked in a week, 52 hours. All right. And we are being asked to calculate what the overtime pay was. When she worked 52 hours. Now, if she worked 52 hours, the overtime hours will be 52 minus 40 because 40 hours is a normal or the basic work week time. So, if she works 52 hours, then the overtime hours is 12 hours. And because the overtime rate is $33.75, we multiply the 12 hours to get the overtime rate. We multiply the 12 hours by the $33.75 and that will be the overtime wage when she works 52 hours so that's $405 all right and then in part 4 we are told that her total wage her total wage in a particular week is $1,440 right and we're asked to calculate the number of overtime hours that she would have worked to earn this $1,440 in a week. But what we need to do first is subtract the normal weekly wage to see what the overtime wage was. Right? So the overtime wage would have been the total wage for that week minus the basic wage. So it means that the overtime wage would have been $540. And in this overtime wage, each hour in this overtime wage, she would be earning $33.75. So to find the number of hours she worked to earn this $540 as overtime wage, we simply divide this $540 by the $33.75. Right? And this is the calculation. The overtime hours would be equal to 540 divided by 33.75 which is overtime rate for one hour and that will tell us the number of hours overtime that she worked and that is 16 and that's the solution from for question one so we'll look at question two in another video okay see you then